Hello, this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. In this video we'll revisit uh, one of those topical uh, subjects that we tend to avoid as much as we can because it is, in my opinion, poignant with further and deeper meanings than are apparent at the surface. I'm talking about uh, the Greta Thunberg phenomenon, that is to say, uh, we're talking about the Swedish uh, little girl who uh, quote-unquote initiated uh, new anti-global warming, climate change or whatever you want to call it, uh, rebellion, that is to say first the school strike, uh, the Europe-wide uh, uh, movement to do uh, kind of uh, demonstrations of sk kids skipping school to prove to demonstrate the dangers of global warming and then this extinction rebellion thing in England uh, something that is very akin or not re really akin but identical with what we would call the manifestation of apocalyptic or death cult taking to the street, secular death cult. Now, I already said a few things about this girl, about the phenomenon, that is, because uh, being such a public personage, uh, personage uh, we don't really see a person behind these shifty eyes of hers. Uh, and what this phenomenon, that is to say, girl, girl turned into public phenomenon uh, represents. Now we'll dwell a bit more about this because there are some very interesting and quite honestly gloomy implications. We'll read one Guardian article praising her by one Ian Burrell. I don't know who he is, I'm not English and I rarely read a uh, Guardian but every now and then uh, they exceed in uh, what I can't uh, term a any different than lunacy and uh, they take a cake for in, in a lunacy context, contest uh, among the mass media in Europe. Uh, a few things that this gentleman wrote about her kind of like prove some points I already made. So we'll read a bit from article and we'll uh, offer the explanations uh, <laughs> uh, of implications in, uh, found in, in passages by this uh, journalist. So let us proceed. Mr. Burrell um, writes, Greta Thunberg is an impressive individual. Not really, but okay. Just 16 years old, she has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize after sparking environmental protests around the planet. There is a glorious simplicity to her arguments that makes them hard to refute. Let us stop here. Glorious simplicity to her arguments. Now, this is the simplicity of Simpleton. Because 16 years old, uh, cannot bring up uh, profound arguments, only in very, very rare cases. The simplicity uh, this journalist talks about is reductionist simplicity of taking all the worst talking points of this climate uh, catastrophe propaganda and uh, pointing them out in the guise of childish innocence. This is the simplicity. Now, uh, the field of science of this relatively, not relatively, but very new science of so-called climate science, climate science, when you try to debate the issues, they bring up political issues. Uh, the most uh, common argument against you will be that you are not fit to discuss this because you don't know the science, because this is so specialized form of science based on computer models or computer modeling 
and uh, divining, in effect, uh, the possible outcomes of uh, in extremely complex systems as climate uh, and weather, uh, to come to the conclusions that are so general that are uh, that are all explanatory to the condition of the world in the future, the whole world, they always tell you you are not fit to discuss this. In fact, we are fit to discuss this because this is epistemological problem. This is problem of principles of science. That is the question. Is it really possible to divine uh, how the world will look like or even end up uh, by empirical means. I am uh, adamantly certain we are not capable of this. This is an argument that I, uh, human being in possession of intellect, I am perfectly, perfectly capable and entitled to make. However, the, the the simplicity of this argument that by being simple is not shallow and can be if we would go on to talk about it, or we could go talk uh, talk about it for hours. But the simplicity of what this, I have to admit, pretty freaky little thing is pointing out is nothing but propaganda. Uh, that is uh, reiterated by mass media like Guardian and by people like Big Wig said De Devos to whom she gave a speech or a European Parliament uh, where she also gave a speech and what uh, the only thing that really scared me there was that those people seem to really take her seriously <laughs> I would not be surprised that they uh, take her as useful, but uh, it seems that they are really starting to believe that we are about to get extinct if we don't act now, as they want to uh, like to say. But they are saying this for decades, and they were saying this even before. Uh, namely, I had a comment on my site, uh, it's a rather insightful comment about this Extinction Rebellion uh, movement in England uh, that uh, where a commenter pointed out that it's all in very simple terms, bollocks. Because uh, the idea that the world will end if we don't act now in few years is really not new. Anybody who grew up in the 80s, and never mind was it in Eastern Europe or in Soviet, even Soviet bloc or Western Europe and USA, should remember uh, the nuclear war scare. In the early to mid 80s, uh, practically it was practically considered inevitable by people. Uh, you have uh, only to look uh, at pop culture. Uh, some uh, very uh, popular pop songs. For instance, you have this uh, song Forever Young by Alphaville, a beautiful electropop song that is in fact uh, kind of like an outcry over the doom uh, hanging over the heads of the young people because uh, this doom is the impending nuclear catastrophe. Now, one thing I would argue is that what is new with uh, this girl and this move, apocalyptic movement is that they don't produce anything beautiful. Forever Young is a beautiful song to this day. It, 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 it stood the test of time. Uh, just don't try to decipher, uh, decipher the lyrics because they didn't <laughs> stand uh, which stood the test of time. Uh, the only thing this girl and uh, her uh, copywriters perhaps uh, are accomplishing is creating paranoia on the one hand and the praise of simpleton. As I said, uh, her arguments are simpleton arguments. They are hard to refute because she is not capable of discussion. She is a child. She cannot discuss complex issues and profound issues, and or she can uh, discuss them in the uh, satisfactory manner. More so, she is, as she 
uh, as as her parents say, or uh, as she herself or her copywriter say on her Facebook page or is part of her public profile, is that she is autistic to some extent because autism is now considered to be not to, as a, as much as I can figure out uh, something that is on the spectrum that is not the disease or uh, uh, the malady you can pinpoint in certain terms. There are a lot of varieties, spectrums or intensities of autism. Autism means that she is uh, mentally impaired. She is not, she is less capable to reason uh, than other kids her age. And this thing I just said is I think a pure heresy for people who are promoting her, but this is simply the truth. So we'll see what else uh, Mr. Ian Burrell has to say about her to uh, further strengthen a point. Thunberg's parents say their daughter, once painfully introverted, was always a bit different to other children. Four years ago, she was diagnosed with Asperger's on the autism spectrum, which helps explain her remorseless focus on the core issue of climate change after overcoming depression. Now, her remorseless focus would be uh, the thing, that is to say, her activity or her talent to make her argument simple. Now, this remorseless focus means that this girl has a tendency, has a uh, unhealthy tendency to focus on a single issue, single argument, single thing, to reduce things, that she's thinking in a reductionist terms, that her interest and focus of so-called climate change after overcoming depression to boot is a not is a is a focus that comes out of sickness but that sickness is called gift it's called difference that is a gift like hell it is a gift and i'm afraid it's ever less and less becoming a difference she says it makes me see things from outside the box. I don't easily fall for lies. No teenager easily falls for lies. <laughs> That's what they think. I can see through things. If I wouldn't, would have been like everyone else, I wouldn't have started the school strike, for instance. So, uh, she's thinking outside of the box in simplistic terms. By reducing things to single issue, and simple arguments, propaganda arguments, she's thinking outside the box. This is manifest, this is a uh, psycho, uh, let's try to use a generous term because this is a child, but this is, this is, this is a mental patient argument. Pure and simple. This is in completely inverted. She don't fall for lies. Of course she does. And she can see through things. What does this mean? Now, uh, the whole of this uh, rucus about this climate business comes uh, with an uh, with a, with 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 a pitch that nobody is talking about it. Not that nobody is talking about it. Nobody is talking about anything else. There are uh, now. I am living in a different part of the world, probably than most than the Anglophone people listening to this and watching this video. Uh, we are not as as as. Uh, tortured with this as Western Europeans. We are not bothered with this so much, by the way. From what, what I could see in West, this is secular le religion. They never let go of this. So I'm really at pains to understand uh, who is selling you a lie, for instance, that there is not catastrophic climate change, except uh, uh, marginals as me, for instance, or somebody who is more uh, uh, into this research and who is uh, actually a physicist. 
or meteorologists. There are such people, but they are pushed to complete margin from the late 80s onwards. I remember when this began with so-called ozone uh, holes, not not mentioned, seldomly mentioned nowadays in, in 87, 88 to 89, as much as I remember. And now it's all losing steam because all those catastrophic production, uh, predictions from uh, first ones done by Club of Rome or Club of Rome hired uh, computer modelers like Jay Forrester, cyberne uh, cyberneticians, until now had been proven catastrophically wrong and nothing, uh, n nothing happened really. But then they use this as an argument, nothing happened because it is still happening and it will go on and on and on until, well, we'll see what happens. We won't go deeper into this. I will do a video or maybe a series of articles, analysis of the predicament of mankind. This is the foundational document of Club of Rome that will perhaps provide you with some clue about mentality uh, behind these uh, apocalyptic Apoc this apocalyptic science or science of a cop apocalypse but we won't go into that now because it deserves to be uh, explained uh, point by point I quote uh, she that is Greta Thunberg admitted her passion was partly down to viewing the world in stark terms the result of her simplistic approach now not to say that I'm reading anything in this, uh, the journalist his, himself uses this simplistic, the term simplistic for simple. Fueled by co her condition is that she has presented this issue with more clarity and competence than almost any adult activist or politician in recent years. This is a statement of either of two things or combination thereof, of idiocy or lunacy, but I think both are at work. Let us repeat. So she admitted her passion was partly down to viewing the world in stark terms, viewing the world in mentally impaired terms, that is. The result of her simplistic approach, fueled by her condition, is that she has presented this issue with more clarity and competence than almost any adult activist or politician in recent years. So she beats Al Gore, <laughs> I guess. Now ponder about this, if you please. She's on autistic spectrum. She has Asperger. She, whatever they mean by Asperger here, because it is also a very fluid term. And this makes her thinking simplistic, that is to say, un not profound and not complex. And she is talking about profound and complex issue, supposedly. And by virtue of this, she presented it with more clarity and nigh competence than activists and politicians. Good thing he done, this, this didn't mention scientists than others. This is sheer lunacy. So the message is, be as mentally impaired as possible in order to think in simple terms. Because you know the world that for many people, especially young people now in the West, I'm always doing this West thing because things are not not uh, uh, uniform everywhere but the east is uh, to think east is bet something better mm, we could discuss this <laughs> in different terms the thing is that uh, 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 people especially young people are lost in the sea of information that is absolute informational overload that is chaos how to cope with it become fucking excuse my French, autist, then you'll make sense. This I posit, my dear listeners, is the message behind this face and behind these shifty eyes, unfocused, that cannot focus on one thing. This is something you, you recognize on this girl.
from the first first moment you lay your eyes, eyes on her. This is the message. And what is interesting, I think that this journalist is not cynical, he really believes it, which makes it worse. And now he goes on on embracing differences and the uh, problems of autistic people. We won't go into that because these problems are real. Uh, out, uh, having a, a child with autism is a uh, terrible cross to bear. And then he makes this point, for instance, just to see this. Turnberg is far from alone. In offering lessons on harnessing difference for wider social benefit. It has been claimed some of the great figures from history were autistic, including Charles Darwin, who transformed our understanding of the planet. On a side note, well, if Darwin's uh, simplistic uh, theology of evolution, because this is what it is, teleology and theology, biological theology or and even transcending uh, biology materialistic theology was a product of the same kind of mindset this girl has and as such has transformed our plan understanding of the planet in what it is currently that i am really not surprised for a one second now this girl on the propaganda level is what we might call holy fool this is the image the archetype of a holy fool it's not something that is uh, really indigenous to west europe something you have in russian culture i won't go deeper into that it's a phenomenon of uh, somebody that is poor in spirit that is inspired by God because he or she has no uh, impediments of, of his own mind and the vanity of his own conclusions but just receives inspiration from, from God or angel or so on uh, so forth. Uh, that's in theory. In practice, uh, one holy fool you had in, that is very famous in the West was Rasputin. I don't think <laughs> there was anything very holy about it. But this is the idea that is also promoted a long time uh, by pop culture. Uh, for instance, in Steven Spielberg's movies with those overly smart kids and mature, where, where uh, uh, grown-ups are learning for kids, where kids are figuring everything out on the basis of their innocence. This is very, very devious. This has nothing to do with reality and how the children are. And this girl is a still child. She's uh, you can call her teenager, but teenager is a very discutable and arguable term in itself. She's very young. This 16 years old. She don't she don't know anything. She has no experience of the world. She's from sheltered family, uh, probably even more sheltered than others because of her of her condition uh, from a rather safe country, a country that and the part of the world that is uh, uh, so rich that people are capable of making a sort of uh, step back from reality easier than you can do it in a country like my own or some other countries in Europe. So, um, I don't... Uh, really, uh, I don't really think that there is any any even teenage maturity in this child. And the message of this little holy fool, or this uh, sacred fool, or or uh, innocent child, innocent angel, because angels are sometimes uh, portrayed as children, which is to uh, point out their innocence. But in a religious uh, in a religious art. Angel is always an angel, and the representation of, of he is uh, <clears throat> here only to bring up some of his aspects, to point out, for instance, wings that, that have to that impress on you I, as a viewer, idea of speed, of instant speed with which angelic uh, spirits uh, move 
in thinking, in doing, and so on and so forth. So this is this is working on. I would say even I don't like the term, but I will have to use it because it is probably subconscious level, and people fall for this. Some people don't, obviously. I don't. I don't for one second. And not a lot of people in I know fall, fell for this. Although in my country, as I said, this is not a big thing, thankfully. <clears throat> we are still religious, so we don't need uh, we don't need surrogate religion that people of England, for instance, obviously need. Because and to to bring up this last point, which is very important, this is a surrogate religion, and this child is a quasi saint. And Nobel Peace Prize is the mark of sainthood. Now, never forget that European Union as an institution received Nobel Peace Prize. So Nobel Peace Prize is not necessarily something that humans get. Institution can get Nobel Peace Prize. And I am sure that a piece of machinery can get it also. So it is, it is something that is completely unhuman. And this kind of uh, promoting this child that is suffering of uh, uh, of a syndrome that is supposedly making her incapable, among other things, of normal empathy is also something to think about. So if she is a model child, and obviously she is because they are promoting her, uh, left, right, and center. The model child would be a simple, simpleton that can understand only simple, simple, simple propositions and then focused on them and nothing else with obsession and pound them incisingly. Also, this child should be impa emotionally impaired, not capable for empathy or uh, having very great difficulties to feel empathy, to feel for others. And this child finally should be an activist and promote this as much as he or she can. Now this is uh, really diabolical, if you ask me. And it is promoted by this leftist rag. I mean, this this newspaper had good authors, good articles now and then, but this is this is beyond the pale how crazy this is. And it's not first time I don't do much of these topical subjects on Kali Tribune with, with reading uh, daily newspapers, but when I do, it <laughs> usually ends up with this with this uh, toilet paper, now virtual toilet paper of uh, of, of Guardian because it, it's so stupid, it's 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 so so insane that you really can't believe. And what I find hard to believe is that people and mass fall for this, and they fall for this because this is the this is the sign that they lost their religions completely. Now it's not easy to lose uh, um, to lose uh, the continuity uh, and inheritance. You come into this world with but apparently it happened in a country I would say there are nations in the West uh, not not every nation but some nations that are really en masse uh, uh, in uh, complete apostasis of any kind not only religion of uh, metaphysics of any kind of attachment to what is beyond uh, the physical mm -hmm. And now that, that the, the, we, we live in <coughs> uh, for for a long decades and hundreds of years in in, in modernity that was uh, in fact hostile towards metaphysics, but it was never uh, the case of people deep down really accepting this. Uh, we lived in the kind of uh, limbo. But now, as it seems, in the West, we can see in some countries, let's say in England or Ireland, I would vouch for Ireland, that this happened to Ireland, uh, uh, people uh, made a semi-conscious decision to cut themselves from this, from transcendence, from God, well, however you like it in this context. And now you see what happens now, they are looking looking to a god that will destroy them that is to say now they call him climate change i wonder what the next big thing will be 
and the prophet is, and the savior is autistic child. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? Only thing crazier is that you have to argue that this is crazy. The only crazier thing. Well, on that light note, I'd say we call it a day with this video. We, uh, it is the second video on the same topical subject. I'm not proud of it, but I think it is very important to point it out some of the implications that can be lost on people sometimes. Uh, thank you for your attention. This was Branko Malic of Kali Tribune signing out.